There you go for those of you over there. So look, there's lots happening. And last week's session was absolutely fantastic. Rochelle's session last week was fantastic. This session is going to be great as well. And I just want to remind you and let you know that you, you must become it before it comes to be. And uh, this is such an important thing to remember is that you must become it before it comes to be. So uh, we only ever have in our life what's in alignment with who we are. Who agrees with that? We only have in our life with, uh, with in alignment with what we are. And, oh, that's good to hear, Peter. And so if we want to create something new, we have to fundamentally become something new. Does this make sense, everyone? It is, it is not a smart idea uh, to try to stay the same and create a new result, even though we would all like that to happen, you know, uh, same emotions, same beliefs, same structure, same people, same, 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 same. But just, can I just have some more money in my bank account? It doesn't seem so much to ask, does it? it is, can I keep everything the same and just change that annoying husband or that annoying wife? Can I just change one thing? Can I stay the same, eat the same food? be the same person and can't I just have, you know, the body in my dreams, right? Can't, can't it just change? And so the thing is, is, is we want something new. And so we think, oh, I know what I need. I need a new strategy. I need a, I need a new, a new communication strategy. I need a new money-making strategy. I need a new diet. I need a new this, I need a new that. And so we strap on a new way of being. We take a new thing and we add it to our old self and it relieves us for a moment. That tension seeks resolution and we think, oh, I just need to learn something or be something or do something different. Who's done this before? Is it just me? <laughs> you sure? It's just me. Hannah says, heck yes, it's just you. Thanks, Hannah. <laughs> and, and so we, we go out there and, and we try and we, we put different things on and, and then we realize, you know what? It wasn't that at all. It was, uh, it, it's, it's actually, I need a different strategy or I need a different one or a different this or a different that. And so we go around in this journey of always looking outside ourselves, you see, instead of really owning and realizing uh, the fact that someone's making those strategies work. Someone can figure out how to make that work. Someone's doing it. And so it's not the strategy, it's the person doing it. Who agrees with this, by the way? Type it in a true if you agree. Give me a true if you agree, because I think it's just true. I think it's just true. And it's, and I, and it's true for me because I know it. You know, I've lived it. I've gone and done these things. And so we must own this statement. If there's something in our life that, that we don't necessarily uh, choose to have, uh, we have to realize that there's some part of us that's okay with it. Some part of us has created it because what's the other option? What's the other option? If, if we don't believe and subscribe to that, we created it. What's the other option? Well, something else created it. And, and if something else created it, well, if something else was in control of it, well, then we can't change it. Does this make sense? And so even though other factors, other forces, maybe you had a terrible childhood, maybe you got abused, maybe you had terrible parents, maybe you didn't have parents, maybe you're adopted, maybe this happened, maybe that happened, maybe in a past life you were, you, you know, you had this pain or that, but this could be so many different things that, that help to create that. But there's only one person that chooses to keep it. There's only one person that chooses to keep that way of thinking. Does this make sense to everybody? Right? There's only one of us, right? And that, and that person is you. And so what we've got to realize is that, yes, bad things may have happened, stuff may have happened, but it's our choice whether or not we chose to keep it. And, and we know this because we see two people in the same household grow up with the exact same parents, but get completely different beliefs. Is it true? Are you the black sheep in your family? Are there others that just, uh, you know, am I the only one that's the odd one out in their family? right? Are there others in your family that just follow the rules? They're totally fine with it, everything else, right? They have completely different rule structures. And so, yeah, there's a few other black sheep in the family, right? Type it in me if that's you, right? <laughs> I got it. I got it, Peter. And so, 
And so what we have to realize is whether or not we want to admit it at some point, at somewhere along our journey, um, we chose to have this, this belief structure. And that's what's really exciting because if we chose it, now we get to, to recode it. But we have to realize that it's ours and that we own it. So, you know, today we're looking at something interesting. Uh, hey, Ali. Hey, guys, I just jumped on. Hey, James. Do I have anyone else here? It's their first time. Hey, Anne. Uh, hey, Isha. I just saw you just pop in there. Hey, James. Hey, John. I think you guys, might, one of you might be new. Hey, Sam. Nice to see you on. Hey, Swappy. Hey, John. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome, new people. Which James is that? James. Is it James Wellington? It is James Wellington. No, there's two Jameses on here now. All good. Good to see you guys on. Good to see you guys on. So today we're talking about something interesting. We're talking about the fear, the fear of poverty or the fear of lack. How many of you don't want to be broke? How many of you have got some sort of resistance to losing it all and being broke? Is it just me? Or do most of us turn up to this world ingrained with a with a away from motivation to not be broke. Now, it, this is very primal. And it's interesting because we we don't want to to be broke. We don't want to have, be in poverty because that might lead to death. See, that's totally true. However, what happens a lot of time is this resistance to poverty or this resistance to losing it all, this resistance to lack is causing us not to be true to ourselves. Does this make sense? It's causing us to not to go for what we love, to take the action needed, because we're so worried about what might happen if it didn't work. Who agrees with that? And so who agrees with that, by the way? Yeah, so, so we don't take some certain actions, we don't do some certain things, and we have this, this resistance. Now, let me ask you, do you have to be fearful or worried about something in order to avoid it happening? Yes or no? Do you have to worry about it to avoid it from not happening? Right. Kerry says no. Peter says no. In fact, you can worry about something and it can happen. You cannot worry about something. It cannot happen. In fact, worrying about something has nothing to do with the thing happening or not. Right. However, what it can do is it can stop you living to your fullest. And so it's an exciting, it's an exciting experiment. I mean, wait, it's an exciting exercise today where we, we're going to look at removing your resistance, removing your fear and worry about losing it all, about poverty, about not having enough so that you can just focus on what you want. See, your focus creates your reality and if you're focused on just making sure that you don't go broke well guess what you're always going to be just above broke i'll say that again when your focus is on just not going broke you'll always just not be broke but you'll never have the abundance you want you see because you're so focused here there's a big difference to focusing on not being broke and then focusing on being wealthy and abundant. Who agrees with that? Who agrees with that? It's a massive difference. It's a massive difference focusing on what you truly want versus focusing on what you don't want to happen. And when I say focused, am I referring to what you consciously focus on? Or am I referring to what you super consciously and unconsciously are focused on when you don't even know it? See, your unconscious and your super conscious is so focused on avoiding lack and scarcity and poverty that it's thinking about it a lot of the time. In fact, a lot of us have a super conscious that is so focused on avoiding rejection, so focused on avoiding failing, so focused on avoiding rather than having what we want. And, and this is what we talk about when you have the psychological tension, right? So you're, you're, here in the, you're here in the current reality and you're trying to go for what you love. 
And you want to be focused towards what you love, whether that's you'd love to make some money, you'd love to be in love, you'd love to, you know, you'd love to have the health and the vitality. Maybe I'll, I'll draw a dumbbell in there for health and vitality. You're focusing on what it is you'd love. So you want to be focused here. And so with your conscious mind, you think you're focusing on your vision, your dreams. But what's actually happening is you're stuck. You're stuck here, psychologically unconscious, super conscious, is focused down here on what you don't want, what you want to avoid. So you think that this is your focus here, but it's actually from avoiding this. And so what happens is, is you never get what you love. You just move a little bit towards what you want. And then you move a little bit back and then a little bit forward and then a little bit back and a little bit forward and a little bit back and a little bit forward and a little bit back. Because as soon as you start moving towards what you love, the tension, it becomes even greater that you might lose it or you might end up here. So then you go back to safety move a bit forward, you come back a bit forward and come back. And oscillation is a epidemic for those who are focused on avoiding. If you're focused on avoiding, you will find yourself in oscillation a lot, one step forward, one step back. By the way, who's felt oscillation before in their life? I'm just gonna see, we've had a bunch of people join in. Hey, Andrea, nice to see you. Nice to see you on here, thanks for making the time. Hey, Heather, saw you just jumped in. Uh, hey, Rihanna, nice to have you on. I think that was it. Yeah, cool. So let me ask you right now, out of 10, how much resistance do you feel to losing it all? Okay, and just feel into this for a second, you know, if you lost it all, you were completely broke, like, where would your self-worth be? How would you judge yourself and how would others judge you? Who would be disappointed? How would you be disappointed? How would others be disappointed? If you completely failed at providing for your family or for yourself, and you, you were there. Out of 10, type in, how much resistance do you feel to this? Ten, thanks. Seven, 10, 10, 10, cool. Awesome, it's quite primal. Like a lot of us should feel it. John's an 11, he's off the scale. Claire came with some other answer. To, to avoid the actual answer. Just, just messing with you, Claire. Claire says she's hungry. So that's a real interesting place to be. A really interesting place to be. So has everyone typed in? Yeah, cool, cool. How much you resisted? So, so what we want to do is, is we want to get to a place where we no longer resist that. Now, when I say to you, uh, we're going to get to a place where you, you no longer resist or have any fear of it all going wrong. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel when I say we'll get you to that place? Mm. Scared, a little bit excited. Yeah. See, I want you to think about this. How much energy do you think as a being are you putting to avoiding this? You know, how much of your energy is there is focused on not letting this happen, right? Imagine if you took all of that energy, let's say it was 30% of your unconscious focus, 
and you are able to put that focus on what you wanted and just go for what you want, how much faster do you think you'd be able to create? Right? How much faster would you be able to create if you had all of that energy off instead of worrying about it going wrong, just focusing on it going right because you had reduced all your resistance to that possibility. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to do a process on this. And for those of you in the certification and the magnetic mind certification, um, we're going to do the double bubble. We're going to do the double bubble. Okay. So if everyone's ready, we're going to go into this and we're going to uh, uncover some things. We're not doing the the recode yet. Uh, we're going to uh, uncover some things. So so give me a yes if you're ready. I've just seen a few people have just jumped on. Uh, hey Helena. Uh, we're talking fear of losing it all, fear of poverty. So put in it out of 10 for that. Nice to have you on. Um, who else just jumped on? Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Saw you just, uh, I just saw you jump on as well. So out of, out of 10, uh, how much do you fear everything going wrong, poverty, losing it all, failure financially? So quickly get us a number. Um, from that at the beginning, and then we'll go straight into this if you're all uh, you're all ready. Cool. So I just want you to to close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes for a second, and I want you to step into the reality that is opposite to losing it all. I want you to step into the reality of having everything you want a complete success, a complete success financially with total abundance and everything you love. And I just want you to notice what emotions are present. You're totally in a bunch. Just close your eyes and step into it, having everything you could ever imagine financially, you're in total abundance. Notice how it feels. Ask yourself, what's my identity when I'm in total abundance? Who am I when I have everything I want? And super conscious, please tag anything. Please tag anything for future treatment. All right, cool. And now we're going to go into the opposite. Okay. So we're going to step into losing it all. Okay. So I want you just to close your eyes or keep them closed. And I want you to step in 100% to failure, 100% to poverty. 100% to not having it and just experience it without judgment. It's not a bad, it's just a moment in time. Just step into it and experience it. Okay, and just notice how you feel. Step 100% into not having it. Connect 100% into not having it. 100% into poverty, failure, just step into it. Who are you when you're here? What's your identity? What are your beliefs? Mm. All right, so, so now we've gathered some information. Come on back. Right on, Isha. Right on, Isha. Here we go. So you're standing here 
and there's these two future points. So, so type in the chat box or, or write down or, or just interact with me. Yeah, type in the chat box. How did each one of them feel? What was the difference between having it all and then and then losing it all in poverty? Like how, like what was really, what was really true for you when you looked at uh, both of them? One was free, one was pressure, the opposite. Um, having everything felt easy. One was no struggle, one was panic. Having it all was not was living, not having it was sad, but freeing at the same time. That's interesting. A lot of people say that not having it is freeing. Thanks, Bronya. One was scared, one was safe. Busy but feel good. The other was disappointed. Oh, we've just had someone else pop in. Welcome to whoever that is. Can't see who it is. Not having it was painful and the identity was so negative, failure unworthy. Having everything was peaceful, the other was scary. The feeling I had towards myself was still within It was neutral. All right, cool. Well done, man. Awesome stuff. Now, um, losing it all, not worthy of love. Well, that's that's interesting, Oshan. That's interesting. Happy, relaxed, giving when I had it, sad and depressed with nothing. So can you guys see how we've coded up these two realities, right? Like there's a belief sitting behind here that says um, one is good and one is bad. True. And so we have this scenario, we have this, this idea that one is good as one is bad and everything else. But, but just let's, let's think about the truth. Let's think about the truth. Neither of them are good and neither of them are bad. They're just different. In fact, if you, you have a lot of abundance, there's also responsibility. There's other things you need to go with that. Uh, there's, you, you don't get to connect with yourself as much maybe because you've got so many other things going on. You're very busy where if you don't have it all, you know, it's you, you rely on someone else who's going to look after you, give you some food. Uh, but you've got a lot of time. You can meditate a lot. You can connect. You can, you know, you've got your whole day to you. So, so it's interesting. It's interesting. Can everyone just agree that they're not inherently good or inherently bad, they're just different aspects. They're just different aspects of, of the journey. And also, neither of them are permanent. Neither of them are permanent. See, what's interesting is you can be really financially rich, but you can be poor on the inside. Who agrees with that? You could have all the money you like in the bank account, but no friends. So let me just ask you, who would like to have all the money in the bank account, but no friends, no family in the world hates you? Or no money in the bank account, but amazing friends and lots of love and connection? Would you like one or two? See, now that's interesting, isn't it? A lot of us are writing in two. There you go, two, two, two. And so what we're doing is we're starting to realize that there's a lot. There's a lot. Hey, Carrie, it's just an exercise for goodness sake. <laughs> I know. Kerry was pointing out, why not have it all? And I'm like, Kerry, I say that. <laughs> I know it's your thoughts, but what I want is I want, oh, I'm trying to have everyone in, in this space. <laughs> you know, I love you.
So what's interesting is if we could clear the resistance and it was totally not part of our vibration to avoid one of those, who thought thinks it will be pretty good? I do. So what we're going to do is we're going to truly find the level of resistance by choosing. Now, let me ask a question. You ready for this one, everybody? Could you understand and realize that all of your thoughts don't turn into reality? Is it true? Does everything you think manifest? <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> If everything we thought about it'd be a crazy world, especially hanging around teenagers, <laughs> it would be a crazy world. So you can think something and it doesn't mean it's going to manifest. Okay. In order for something to, in fact, because if, if it did, let's all just say I have a billion dollars. Everyone just think Chris Duncan has a billion dollars. <laughs> so we know that thoughts alone don't create. So would it be okay if you could play a game with me and we could choose to desire to be broke? Could you do that? Because what I'm going to do is we're going to really find all the resistance by, by overcoming and seeing what's going on for us. So, so do this with me. Close your eyes for a second, okay? Just close your eyes. And you, this is an exercise, all right? So close your eyes. It's an exercise. You can do it. It's not going to hurt anyone. And I want you to choose in your mind to be broke. I want you to choose. I want to be broke. I'll be happy to be broke. I'd be so grateful to be in poverty. And I want you to choose it. And as you choose it with 100% of your energy, I want you to notice what resistance comes up to choosing this. Explore what emotions are present that don't let you want to choose this, that or want to avoid it. And superconscious, can you tag all of that? I want you to notice what identities and part personalities do not want you to choose this. Is it the achiever? Is it the pleaser? Is it the inner child? Who and what parts of you avoid this? Superconscious tag all these parts. And just really choose it with your whole body and just explore every aspect of it. What thoughts are there as you choose this? What tries to make you avoid it? What feelings, what beliefs, what ideals, what worldview? And I want you just to gather all of that information. And now let's go to the other side. I want you to choose to be completely rich and abundant and step into it. And again, I want you to notice any fears that pop up or emotions or beliefs or aspects, anything that stops this choice, judgments of yourself or others. excitement or good emotions, emotions you want, just notice it all that comes when you just step into a worldview of having it all. And super conscious, I want you to tag all parts of our consciousness in here as well. Tag them for treatment later. Now we're going to go to a third position, keeping your eyes closed. I want you to go to the middle. I want you to go to the middle, which is actually where you live most of the time, where part of you is choosing to be rich and abundant, but part of you is judging it and dis disliking to be rich and abundant. And then part of you actually wants to be broke and be in poverty and be cared for and looked after by others 
and then part of you doesn't want it. And I want you to be in the middle for a second and just notice what it's like to be right in the middle of two competing desires and resistances. It's like you're in the middle of a game, a tug of war, feeling two things pulling either side of you, but you're not moving. You're not moving. There's an equal amount of force and pull and resistance that keeps you stuck in just one place right in the middle. And I just want you to notice what it's like to be stuck right in the middle. And Superconscious, please tag all of that and everything that's needed for future treatment. All right. You can open your eyes and come back. So give me some feedback on what it was like going into those different aspects. How did everyone go? Hey, Jackie, I saw you just came on. Nice to see you. Cool. Got a balance. Thanks, Oshan. Nice. Got it. Got it, Kerry. Cool. Right on, Wendy. Wendy says one of the fears came up on both sides. Hey, if you type in and you see it just says all panelists, there's a little thing you can tip so everyone else can see um, what you've written in. Broke, you bet, yep. Right on, thanks, Ali. Both are a mixture of good and bad. <laughs> well, that's interesting, Andrea. Thanks, Wendy. Massive light bulb mo moment, it came up for me. Okay, cool. Right on, Rebecca, because wherever you go, there you are. You've been resenting abundance. Got it, James. It is. It will be helpful. So here's what I want you to realize, guys, because Isha is getting it. Lots of you are getting it, is that whichever spot you go to, there you are. Who noticed that? Like, whichever ever spot you go to, there you are. So... It's just you in, e in, in each single one of those. Type in a yes if you get it. It's just you each, each time. You can be stressed out and rich, stressed out and broke, and stressed out in the middle. You can be abundant when you're broke, abundant when you're rich, and abundant in the middle. Yeah, right on, Sam. Got it. Got it. Nice. So, guys, we're going to do the super conscious recode. Is there anyone that hasn't done the recode? Type in a me if you haven't done a recode. Is there anyone that hasn't done one? Cool. So, so we've got a couple new people. So real quick intro into the, into the recode. We work with the superconscious. Okay. The superconscious is the aspect of our consciousness that's been with us uh, our, whole, our whole existence. You might call it your genius. You might call it your higher self. Now, the superconscious is the first memory. When we do the recode, we realize that all beliefs are based on memories. At some point, we've memorized a way of being, a set of rules, a set of structures that turned into a belief. In fact, the superconscious was actually the part of us that learned how to take two cells and turn them into four, into eight, have a heartbeat and turn into your body. So it was there before you were born and it's been with you the whole time. The superconscious is the part of you that will always be there and it's connected to everything. I'm connected to your superconscious and if you give me permission, I can connect in and we can create massive change, massive recoding right back here that goes through. Now, what's interesting is the superconscious was there while you learned how to walk, while you learned how to talk. So we can communicate it in, with it in English. And I will. We'll communicate with the superconscious. And uh, by the way, type in a yes if it's cool for me to communicate to you superconscious today and, and for you to create change. So, so what we do, guys, is we pull out resistance and we put it up on display, okay? 
and we put it up on display and we call this the active experience. So where you are now is the active experience. You're actively experiencing life. So we're going to put resistance, all the resistance on display. And I want you to imagine you're playing life on a, like a football field. And as you're playing on the football field, that's your life experience. And those little animals, John, those gophers, you know, those little furry animals, I want you to imagine that's, we're going to ask that to come out in front of you. That's the resistance and that's going to pop out. And your superconscious is going to remember the exact order that the, that the resistance pops out in the exact order in the exact way. And it's going to remember the code. And it's just going to be very subtle. The, you know, the animals come out, they'll run away. And we'll just remember with the superconscious to get a feather. And very gently and easily, we'll just push all the dirt back in uh, so, that, so that we can play on the field and the active experience without all this, all this stuff in the way. So it's, it's very easy. Uh, it, if it's your first time, you just sit back, close your eyes. Uh, as long as I've got permission and you want to get more satisfaction in life, then you're going to have a great experience. So it uh, looks like everyone is, uh, is everyone is good to go. So we are, we're working on having 100% focus. Does that make sense, John? You good? Awesome. We're working on having 100% focus on choosing to create abundance by letting go of any fear of poverty or lack or anything like that. Okay, that, that's, that's our end result, okay? And you've all got your first number that you typed in. So look, if you're ready to go and it's okay for me to connect to your super conscious, just, just close your eyes and relax for a second. And just take a few relaxing breaths and just connect to your body and give me a second just to connect in with your, your super conscious. Just relax with every breath. Super conscious, see there it is. Super conscious, do you see this resistance? in the forms of beliefs, thoughts, and memories when it comes to, when it comes to scarcity or lack or poverty, yes. Please treat and do a massive change history on these structures. Thank you. Just notice what you notice and just breathe into it. Superconscious, do you see memory number one connected through family and genealogically? Thank you. Please treat to a massive change history on memory number one. And everyone just notice what's happening and just breathe in with it. Superconscious, do you see the fear of poverty? Yes. Please treat to a massive change history and everything after that. Thank you. So I want you to step into that bubble again. Step into that bubble of I choose to be broke. I choose poverty. I choose lack. I want you to step into it now and explore all aspects of that choice. And super conscious, do you see all of this resistance? The resistance to lack, the resistance to poverty, the fear of going broke. Please treat the original event, this lifetime, past lifetimes or future timelines and everything in between 
Please treat and do a massive change history. Thank you. Superconscious, do you see the protector controller? Yes. I'd like everyone to invite their protector controller in on the treatment. There's a part of your personality that's there to protect and control. Please ask, Superconscious, please ask if this part would like treatment. Let's talk to this part, the, the part that's resisting treatment. And I wanna let it know that when pain is resolved, it turns to wisdom. At the moment, we're not communicating with the main personality and it's affecting our current reality. We require you to have treatment. You will not die. You'll just exchange information with the main personality. So superconscious, please treat all parts in relationship to this resistance, all part personalities, please treat and do a massive change history. Thank you. Awesome stuff, guys. That's clearing up nicely. Just keep your eyes closed and just stay in that for a second and just allow it to, to move down, just like the dials of a you know an old radio, just turning the volume down. And now let's step into the desire. Step into that desired reality, complete abundance, rich, having all the money and notice all the fears, all the resistance and explore it and super conscious. You've already tagged aspects of this, but please have a good look around, stretch, stretch this right out and feel all resistance or fears or worries or judgments or resentments towards being rich and abundant and having loads and loads and loads of money. And super conscious, can you please tag all these fears and judgments and worries that are decreasing satisfaction in life? Thank you. Please treat everything inside this bubble and do a massive change history. Thank you. Superconscious, please have this work on the body, especially inside the brain, the neurology, the endocrine system, and all parts of the physiology related to stress. Please treat to a massive change history. Thank you. Okay, just keep breathing into that, guys. We're doing a deep recode right at the physiological level in relationship to stress around this. So super conscious, please bring up all stress-related resistance. Please treat to a massive change history. Thank you. And everything, everything is needed. It's a real big one for a lot of you. So just, just allow yourself to breathe and just notice. Just take some big breaths. Treatment is good. You only have to go as far as you choose to go. You're in control, super conscious.
and just notice the opening inside your neurology or inside you and let's step into the middle where you both desire and reject you both you desire and reject both you desire abundance but parts of you reject it you reject poverty but a part of you desires being looked after by others so notice it all stand right in the middle And super conscious, do you see this huge contradiction and all this wasted energy? Yes. Can you please notice that there's benefits and negatives on both sides of this? Yes. Can you please notice that neither makes a, a person better or worse? Yes. And super conscious, can you gather everything up that in, that's creating this resistance, this desire, and all this internal struggle? And please do one massive change history, taking the resistance from wherever it is down to zero so we can finally choose from a neutral place. Please treat everything as needed to a massive change history. Thank you. And just notice the stillness inside of you. Even if it's just a little bit. And don't forget to breathe. And when you're ready, I'd like to check in and hear how you're going. So if you wouldn't mind just opening your eyes, if you can, now and just and just type in and let me know how you are. I'd love to know your first number that you wrote in before and then your number where you're at now. So Peter says nine to one. Nice like to know your first number and then your next number. 10 to three, Heather, nine to four, eight to zero, 10 to three, seven to three, 10 to one, eight to zero, seven to two. Well done, John. John, fill us in. How was your first session? Eight to two, four to zero, 10 to five, eight to zero, rock to tree, <laughs> 10 to five, Cool. Nice. Yeah, okay, cool. That's interesting. That's interesting, Jackie. Unknown to zero. Cool. So we're going to uh, we're going to finish uh, and get this down to zero. Does everyone want to have this resistance down to zero? Is it is there anyone that thinks that there'll be some negative consequences if they don't resist poverty? Or does everyone want to get it down to zero? Type in a yes if you do want this down to zero. All right, cool. Well, we're in control. So if you're ready. Just, just tune back in and close your eyes. And just for a second, just remember what we're choosing. Super conscious, are you there? Yes. Superconscious would like to have no resistance, no fear, and no worry. Would like to be able to completely accept that reality. So please find all aspects of our consciousness, part personality, broken promises, memory, physiological aspects of us, chakras, energy centers, timelines, events, 
symbols or anything else that's causing that resistance and superconscious please do a massive change history and everything after that. Please reinforce with positive thoughts. Positive thoughts like I'm always abundant. I'm always rich. I choose to go for what I love. Superconscious, please reinforce all memories we've touched today with positive feelings. The first one is courage. Can we tune into courage? What does it feel like to be courageous? What does it feel like to have courage? What would it feel like? Could you feel courage right now? Super conscious, I wanna reinforce with courage. I wanna reinforce with ease. Can you reinforce with ease? What's it like to feel ease right now and flow? Can you feel it just ease? What's something that's just, how can you feel ease and flow? Can you feel like things are just easy and flowing? It's simple, it's easy. Just reinforce please super conscious with the feeling of ease. Just tune into the feeling of ease. Superconscious, we choose to reinforce with ease. Superconscious, please reinforce with the feeling of trust. Please reinforce with the feeling of trust. What would it feel like to feel completely trust for yourself? You know, like you trust the sun is going to rise tomorrow. Can you trust yourself? Can you even just do it? What would it be like if you could feel trust, even just a little bit? Superconscious, please reinforce with trust. And superconscious, can you ground all the memories we've touched today, including memories one, two, and three, and ground them into the matrix of the universe, including tandem memories, future memories, ego states, and all aspects of consciousness. Please tag and treat all memories between now and the next session. All right, everybody, come on back. How was that? <laughs> Carrie gave me a wow. That's a good thing. Nice, nine to one to zero, super calm. Wendy, absolute wow. Gwen, awesome, thank you. So I'd love just to hear, what was your first number? What is your last number? I've lost a couple people. I hope that they're okay. They didn't get lost in super conscious land. <laughs> Wendy's down to a zero. Uh, Andrew's down to a one. Ellie's down to a zero. Feeling like headed, cool. Trust was the trigger. Is that a good trigger or a bad trigger? John's down to one, Isha one, so calm zero, down to three, down to one, ten five one. Awesome, Sam, doing great. Ah, beautiful. 
Well, I love it, Jackie. Jackie, I want you to tune into the, the feeling of, um, of trust. <laughs> awesome, Isha. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So here's, here's the big lesson. Go for what you want, not just avoiding what you don't want. True. So I'd like you to spend the week focusing on meditations that you're choosing what you love. So my favorite one that I'd love you to go with this week is the inner power meditation. Remember, it's totally cool to recode and to release and do these sessions, but we must also tune in and choose what we freaking love. So let's do that. I hope you all had a great session. Now, those of you who are interested in the certification, please reach out. Um, we're still taking people into the Magnetic Mind certification. Um, we've got a huge discounted opportunity for people still until the end of the year. So if that's you and you would really like to, to be certified in this work or become a trainer, uh, then, then please do reach out to someone, myself, uh, Hannah, Rochelle, uh, if that's something you like, if you're happy with where you are, fantastic. We love you. It was just a little, a little just nudge. Guys, remember this. You will never see it until you be it. These sessions are vital and important, but it's also just as important that every single day you're stepping into the new you, right? That you're doing the meditations, that you're creating your new reality that you're taking the action. Remember, the seed doesn't turn into a forest by just sitting in the packet. It needs to be planted and watered and fertilized. It needs to have time. It needs to have energy. And it needs to believe that it's the forest. And that's true for you as well. 